the thing I really want to talk about in the context of this class is using raster files for analysis. So we're going to um, get away from thinking of rasters as just images that are like map maps for underlays and think about rasters as a tool for actually doing analysis and, uh, for heat maps and interpolation. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, bring in my data that I will use to create the heat map and interpolation uh, for the demo. Uh, for the data, I will use the set of Weibo check-ins in the whole PRD. And this is the data set that's already online for you guys to use. Uh, here it is, Weibo PRD, downloaded in August, all entries. Um, so I'm gonna bring that in the same way as I did last week. So you see here the data, uh, it has a little over 100,000 locations, I think. It has uh, place IDs, titles, addresses, and categories, both uh, a very detailed category and a general kind of uh, meta category for each location. Each location is a, a place that you can check in within the Pearl River Delta on Weibo. And each data point also has information about the number of check-ins total for that location and the number of users that have checked into that location. Uh, in this case, the latitude and longitude are labeled, so uh, it should automatically specify that the, as the X and Y field. So I'm going to click OK. It might give you some errors. Skip through that. Specify WGS84 because it's latitude and longitude data. All right, and here's all the points. It's a lot of points. It might be a little slow. Uh, this is all the places registered on Weibo. And the first thing we want to do, like always when we bring in a text file, is just save it out to a shape file. Okay? Again, it makes it easier and allows us to actually edit the data in that file. So we're just going to go to uh, right click on the point data, go to save as, and then uh, specify a name. So I'm going to say Weibo check-ins. Keep the CRS, uh, the default and add saved file to map. Click OK. So all that's done at this point is just save that exact same data with all the same attributes as a shape file. Okay, and it's made it lighter so now we can look around a little bit easier. If you wanted to visualize all these points, you could at this point. Um, but I'm actually gonna go further. I don't wanna work with the whole PRD. I just wanna work with the Shenzhen, Hong Kong area. Okay, and that's for a specific purpose that might be different in your case. So once I have that up as a shape file, I'm just gonna remove this file, okay? So keep this layer as organized. So now this is a shape file representing all the points. And now I want to just select the points in Shenzhen, Hong Kong. So I'm gonna use my poly boundaries again. So last week we looked at using these boundary files to actually extract the points automatically. Um, that's really useful if you have really complicated boundaries. In this case, because the Hong Kong boundary is so kind of easily differentiable, I'm just going to use a selection tool to select those points. Okay, so you don't always have to use Polygon. If you're just looking to select something, uh, you can use these selection tools as well. So in this roll down, there's a lot of ways to do it. The default is the rectangle, right? It's just a standard kind of rubber band selection. You can also use a Polygon or Freehand. So I'm going to select the Polygon tool and just quickly and roughly trace out the boundary of Shenzhen. In my particular case, it's not so important, the boundary. I just want a general sense of the Shenzhen Hong Kong area. So I'm just going to roughly, to save time, sketch out. And what I'm doing now is using this lasso to select all these points. Once I have them selected, I can then save as to export those points as another layer. So once I have the Shenzhen boundary done, I can just trace over the water boundary of Hong Kong. Hit the right, right mouse button to uh, stop your selection. Now all the points are selected. This is exactly the same as if I selected by data and attribute table or I selected by another polygon layer using spatial query. It's the same exact thing. The end result is you just have some amount of data selected. Once I have these selected, I can right click on the layer, go to save selection as, and specify a name. Following my format that I introduced last week, I'm just gonna tack on to my old name. And just say selected here. Keep everything the same, add the file to the map, and click OK. Okay, so I'm gonna remove that 
general data set. And I'm doing this because the more data you have, the slower everything will be. So if you, if you know a specific area of data you want, the first task is always to narrow it down so you can work with these things much better. There's no point of keeping the whole kind of region if you just want to work on one city. So now this is all the check-in locations in uh, Shenzhen, Hong Kong. And the last thing I'm going to do is filter some of those locations and just focus on what I want. And what I want is all food and beverage locations, so all kind of restaurant uh, sites that have at least one check-in. So that's two layers of uh, filtering. I'm going to go to my attribute table for my points. And just like last week, I'm going to use the advanced filter to filter it in both ways. Actually, the first thing I need to do is make sure that the field I'm going to be filtering by is a numerical field. And we also dealt with this last week. You see where it brings in uh, data. Sometimes, even if it's a number, it brings it as a text data. See, it's justified along the left side. What I want to do, basically, is filter out locations that have zero as the check-in number. The first thing I need to do is to convert that field into a number field. I'm going to go into Edit shapefile. So I click the, the pencil here. I'm going to open the field calculator, create a new field. Just, I'm going to call this check-ins. Keep it as integer. And here I'm just going to specify my check-in number field. This is the same exact data. I just want to convert it into a whole integer format. Click OK. And now here's my data. Again, it's the same thing, but now it's justified to the right. So now it's a number type of field. Uh, so I'll unclick the pencil and go to save. Now I have that field here. And now I'll go to my filter, advanced filter. And here uh, I'm just filtering what data is displayed based on some value. Once that's displayed, I can select and export or delete just that data. So to do the filter, I'm going to go to fields and values. I'm going to find my check-ins data. I'm going to say check-ins is smaller than one. Okay, so this is going to filter out only data where there's less than one check-in. Okay, so what that did is just displayed all of the locations that have no check-ins. I'm going to control A to select all of them. See, they're selected in the map. And just and uh, I have to activate editing again because I want to make changes to the shapefile. <coughs> and click delete feature. Okay, so now it's deleted all those. Uh, locations with zero check-ins. I can stop editing, click Save. Uh, and now the last thing I want to do, now that I have all of my locations uh, with at least one check-in, I want to go back to the attribute table, and now I want to filter by the category. So in the last, one of the last columns, category two, this is my uh, sort of uh, macro level categorization. And you see in here it has this category food drinks. I just want to filter out and look at only uh, locations that are food or drink related. So I'm going to go to advanced filter, uh, go to fields and values, category two. And if you want to filter by a specific category and you're not sure what categories are available, there's this really useful tool in your expression editor. Uh, if you click on any of the fields and do all unique, it'll pull out all the unique values of that category. Okay, So don't do this with something like price. It's going to generate like thousands of unique values. Do it only if you're sure that it's a limited amount of categories. And then it's really easy to say category 2. So just double click here, equals. And you can just double click on any of these to bring them into here. So you don't have to remember a copy and paste. You can just use this interface to select the category you want. So now I'm going to filter only locations that have this category as food drinks. Click OK, and here they all are. So I'm going to Control A again. So they're selected in the map. And uh, I'm going to right click on the layer and do Save Selection As to export those as a new shape layer, just the food and drinks. So I'm going to tag on a name to this and just say Food. Add Save File to Map and click OK. All right, so now here is all my food. You can see that we've gotten rid of a lot of points, but in this case, I'm just interested in the distribution and popularity of restaurants in both these cities.